I believe we are now recording. Uh, my screen says transcription has recording and transcription. OK, oh. great. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I think some folks may still be joining us, but just to respect everyone's busy schedules, I think we'll get we'll get started now. Um, and uh, what I'm hoping we can do, I'm going to do a, a well, maybe I'll introduce the OIA team first uh, so you know who's uh, on the call. And then we'll do a roll call of everybody uh, on again. So I'm I'm John Putnam with the National Park Service International Affairs Office. And joining me are Steve Morris, the chief of the office, and uh, Phyllis Ellen, who is a retiree but has been uh, working with us on a contract for several years now and has been an absolutely essential part of our team. And I am hoping that both Steve and Phyllis, as I go through the presentation, you will feel free to uh, chime in with any errors, omissions, or other things you want to add. And we also have a session at the end to go over any additional points and, of course, let folks uh, ask questions. Um, and so with that, I'm just going to go through an alphabetical roll call of all of our 24 World Heritage Sites. And if you hear your site, uh, please um, just say you are here and present. And that's first question, are you here? And second, have you actually been able to access the periodic reporting uh, questionnaire? So uh, please listen for your site. Um, uh, Cahokia Mounds, are you on the call? Not here. I know um, uh, the, the superintendent did uh, RSVP, but uh, I'll check in at the end. Carlsbad Caverns, I believe I heard you. Yep, I'm here and uh, I've already started some of the um, the reporting. Great, thank you. Chaco, Chaco Culture. Presence and uh, I have initiated the data entry already. Great, thank you, Aaron. That Everglades. I believe they said they were not going to be able to make it. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. Yes, here. And the questionnaire. I've I've opened it and okay. uh, looked at it. <laughs> That's the most important thing. That you yeah. actually have yeah, access to it. Mm -hmm. OK, great. Uh, I, I just saw Scott, Scott Guinea, but Glacier Bay, Wrangell St. Elias. Good morning. Yes, present and uh, we're, we're working on it. We're working on you individually. Could, you're, you're a complicated site, with, a place with so many different sites, but we will we'll get you access, <laughs> Scott. Uh, Grand Canyon. Yeah, Wrangell St. Elias is here. Oh yes, thank you. Ex forgive me. Yeah, you lumped us together, so that's I good. know. Uh, Grand Canyon. Great Smoky Mountains. We are here and I'm still working on getting the password, but I did this last round, so I'm okay. familiar with it. Paul, let me know if you need help from us with UNESCO to get you that access. Thank you. Yep. Hawaii volcanoes. They're busy. Yeah, right. I think the volcano <laughs> stopped uh, erupting yesterday, so hopefully less busy. I know Rhonda said she was going to be on, but I will. Maybe check in again later. Independence Hall. Yes, Mary Lorler. I'm here for Independence, and I have been able to access the site. Great, thank you. Mammoth Cave. Yes, we are present, and we have access. Great, thank you. Mesa Verde. Yes, and yes. <laughs> thank you. Monticello, University of Virginia. Here, and we have access. Thank you. Olympic National Park. I was told they were not going to join us today. We'll get them next time. Papahanaumokuakea. I believe they're also a later one. Poverty Point. Diana, are you there? Doesn't sound like it. All right. Redwood, I saw you, Leonel. And yes, you have access? Yes, indeed. Thank we you. have access. San Antonio Missions. I think they're later. San Juan, La Fortaleza. Nada. Okay, we'll check in with Felix. 
Patch of Liberty, I, I see you there. And I know you've got at least halfway through the questionnaire, right? I got John? at least halfway, and I, I have to confess, Jonathan, I think I'm going to need an intervention. Um, <laughs> I can probably find the link in my email, but I probably am not going to know what I what password I created. Okay. So there may okay. need to be a password reset. All right. We can, and we can. you may go over this later, but yeah. there are a lot of ways to answer some of those mm. questions. Uh, yep. There was also additional demographic information that, first of all, I didn't have at my fingertips. And secondly, it all depends on, you know, are we talking about the green and gray NPS and mm -hmm. the park police mm -hmm. and the concessioners? You know, okay. to answer those questions, I, I think we there needs to be some degree of consistency or direction. Yeah. So I have not completed it for that okay. reason, and That's I may fine. need some assistance. Well, we'll get into that some today, and then of course we can also okay. set up separate meetings if necessary later. Um, House Pueblo. No, I did not hear from them. And let's see, we're almost uh, almost finished, folks. Uh, Glacier National Park, part of Waterton Glacier. Yeah, that <laughs> threw me when you skipped me after Glacier. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's a little tricky. A little curveball. <laughs> Filing yeah. under W, really. Huh. <laughs> right. So right. I believe, so I see Dave's here now too. So I believe you have been in and he shared the questions with me Great. to work okay. on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Yes, we're here and Jennifer Carpenter has access, although I have not seen it yet. So okay. we're on it. Great. And then finally, Yosemite. OK, great. Well, thank you. Thank you for bearing with me on that. So we have a little presentation that we are going to share with you. If, I, if it'll just give me a second to figure out sharing again. Let's see. There we go. No, that's the. There we go. Sorry, folks. And slideshow. Okay, can everybody see that? Can anybody see that? Yes, we yes. see it. All right, oh, great. Good. So uh, again, we are going to be talking about um, uh, the current. This is now the third PR reporting exercise that uh, uh, we've been through, and we're just going to do a brief overview, hopefully brief, and uh, then go into uh, any further discussion, questions, and hopefully some answers for you. Um, the timeline that we're uh, hoping everyone to fo uh, will follow um, and hopefully make this as um, relatively painless as possible for everybody involved. So first of all, uh, what is periodic reporting? Um, in theory, uh, every six years, uh, each state party is asked to report on how the convention is being applied in their territory. Uh, that six years is a plus minus. It's a, I actually um, was looking through again. Our last reporting uh, reports were submitted in 2013, so we're coming up almost on on 10 years. So we'll attribute part of that to to the global pandemic. But in theory, it's every every six six years. And this uh, this exercise um, it consists of really two two questionnaires. Section one, which is looking at the the national perspective. Uh, um, and that's going to be uh, completed by by the Park Service, by by our office essentially. And then Section Two, which is completed by each of our 24 uh, sites in the U.S. And and the reporting is done uh, regionally around the globe. Oh, hold on a second, folks. Someone is. I don't know if Steve or Phyllis can let. I think yeah. someone just tried to get in. Thank you. It's Diana Greenley. Oh, good. Okay. Welcome, Diana. We just started on the overview. And it's done regionally. Um, North America is lumped with Europe, and so now it's our turn to to go through this. What is the purpose? Uh, big picture, it's uh, you know looking at the state of conservation of individual World Heritage sites. Uh, it's assessing how the convention is being applied by the state parties, by the by the host governments. Uh, it's intended to uh, be a, a way to share experiences, best practices, lessons learned between all of the state parties, between individual sites and site managers and other people involved in the World Heritage uh, community. And to encourage cooperation and, and networks. Um, some of you may be involved with the Marine World Heritage Network as an example. That's one of our, I think, most active ones that the, that the US is, is involved with. 
what are these reports uh, used for? Um, I mean, I would say uh, fundamentally these are really in a sense more for the World Heritage Center and for UNESCO, um, trying to get a really big picture view of how the convention is being applied globally. Um, you know, it's not really, um, uh, it's not necessarily focused on the individual site per se, but but trying to see um, where, where the convention is going, where the more than 1,000 sites uh, are going, um, you know, facing serious threats like climate change, uh, development, et cetera. What are some of the key challenges, key threats, and key successes that uh, World Heritage Sites uh, are dealing with and, and reporting on? Um, you know, in theory, it's also uh, used to enhance um, state parties' capacities uh, to develop uh, more sustainable conservation mechanisms. Um, and the reporting is sort of a baseline uh, for um, or what we say here, targeted activities at both national and regional levels. Um, and John, I just yes. wanted to add to that, that mm -hmm, um, although you are all going to be filling out tons of information on your individual properties, the reports that come out of this are, um, the, the individual questionnaires exist, but the reports um, are consolidated right. statistical information rather than site specific. Thank you. Uh, again, most of you have either seen this before or have been able to access the current questionnaire, so you have a sense of what it looks like and what they're asking. Uh, fortunately, a lot of the basic information has already been filled in for you. Um, even if uh, you have not done this before, a lot of that basic information uh, should already be in your questionnaire. Uh, we have, I believe, now sent you all uh, copies of the 2013 questionnaire, the, the answers that you provided. So hopefully you have that as some background and help you fill out um, uh, this questionnaire. And I would also add, um, since you invited me to interrupt, I will. Anytime. Um, that um, this auto-filled information um, should in almost every case um, be something that you can just validate. There should be ve very few instances since we went through the exercise a number of years ago to update the, the statements of outstanding universal value and verify the maps and the boundaries. All of that should be correct. And so if there's anything that you see that is not correct, let us know. But this is, this is not the, um, the forum for uh, tweaking your statement of outstanding universal value. Basically, we're just going to accept what's there. Great, thank you. And uh, it will focus on things like protection and management of your property, financial and human resources, visitor management issues, uh, et cetera. Uh, just a little bit more what types of questions. Um, a lot of it will be on the factors affecting the property, um, and those can be both internal and external factors. Uh, you can, can see some of the, um, the common uh, challenges, development, pollution, climate change, et cetera, and we are um, uh, we need to indicate whether those threats are relevant or not relevant to your site. Again, you're basically just checking in a box. Are they positive or negative? Um, again, are they external or the internal? And is that threat increasing, decreasing, or or stable? And, and another um, important. Oh, well, yeah. go ahead, Phyllis. Yeah. This is probably what you were about to say. Is yeah. that when you're talking about inside or outside the site, that refers to your World Heritage boundary, which may or may not be the same as your site or park boundary. So um, have a map of your World Heritage. Um, boundary available to you while you're filling it out. Yeah, thank you. And then there are, as you've probably seen, you've looked into this, um, there are um, spaces where you can put in additional information to try to get to more of the, the nuances if there are uh, nuances that you need to share. Um, and this is important as well. You really need to focus on the outstanding universal values of your site. Um, and of course, all of our parks and other uh, World Heritage Sites have many other values that are important to us and to you. Um, but for the purposes of this exercise, you need to focus on the OUV. And just as an example, um, Monticello Gardener, I mean, you may have some invasive plant problem, which is could be a big issue for you, but it has nothing to do with the OUV. So um, you, you may have to mention it somewhere, but it's really not uh, something that's going to be a high priority uh, for the for the questionnaire for the World Heritage Center. So focus, focus. Hopefully, you know your OUV, but but focus on uh, on that. Um, yeah, obviously, hope this is obvious. We need to re uh, respond to every question, um, and if you're not able to do so, if you don't have the data, um, and you need to explain you know, what the what the challenge with that is. 
Um, and here again, it says, you know, you may not you, you may not collect things like tourism data, but you may be able to find out uh, someone else um, who does and try to get that information uh, from them. Um, so this reporting uh, should be uh, consistent uh, with other reporting that we may have been sending to UNESCO to the World Heritage Center. Uh, some of our sites, of course, have um, such as Everglades we're reporting almost every two years uh, because on the danger list, but many of our sites have had to submit one type of report or another over the years. So um, obviously we need to just make sure that what we're telling UNESCO or telling the center and the committee you know, through them is uh, is consistent. Um, you know, this is not, it's not a competition. Uh, this is a, a chance, really. You know, every decade or so, to reflect and 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 think about some of these uh, challenges and, and what we're doing about them. Um, and here, I think this is an important uh, uh, thing to remember. It's not just about the challenges and the threats and the negative factors, um, but this is an, also an opportunity for us to highlight a lot of the things that you all have done well. Um, and that you want to share and maybe you know things that have really significantly improved since the last time we did this. So remember um, it's the uh, there's both good and um, well there's both bad and good uh, news to share. Um, process is going to be uh, different for uh, every site. Um, and uh, you know again, you may have other reporting that you've done internally, uh, not you're not not submitted to the center. Uh, and past reporting on your site may be helpful um, as you are developing your answers. So what is the role of OIA, Office of International Affairs? So um, first of all, we will be taking the lead on answering the, the national level questionnaire, questionnaire number one. Um, and then uh, for uh, for the questionnaire you all are working on, questionnaire two will provide support as much as we can, you know, working uh, with UNESCO and World Heritage Center if necessary. But again, you all know your sites way, way better than we do, um, and uh, we'll help out where we can, but we're really relying on you to provide the, the best information. And then also we will, um, uh, once the, uh, the draft uh, questionnaires are completed by you, we will coordinate the review by the Department of the Interior, which ultimately has um, you know, the responsibility for getting these cleared and sent to uh, UNESCO. And some uh, timelines, some deadlines here of September 21st is when we um, hopefully most of you got access uh, to the questionnaire. Again, we'll work with those of you who don't have that to make sure you do. Um, we're ho ho holding at least uh, two um, of these sessions. We hope to have another one in early January for those who did not make today. Um, but I'm also recording this one so we can send that to folks who are not on the call. Um, February 15th, uh, this is not a hard and fast deadline, but we we do want to really encourage you to uh, have gone through the entire questionnaire uh, basically two months from now uh, to make sure you understand it. And if there are any other, if there are any major issues, questions, challenges with filling the a questionnaire that you've, you know, share those with us so that we can help you figure them out. Maybe bring it in the World Heritage Center as necessary. Um, so, um, Try to try to get this all done, uh, at least that first the first round uh, within two months from now. So as Phil has pointed out on on tax day, um, we're also asking you to uh, have the, the final uh, questionnaires basically ready for um, review by by our office. Uh, we are asking that um, Park Service sites or those sites that are jointly uh, administered by Park Service and another partner that you um, have your questionnaires reviewed by your appropriate regional office. You know, we're not going to be checking up on that. Um, you know, we're going to let you all figure out uh, how to do that with the appropriate contacts, whether it's a regional director or someone else. Um, you know, we're not going to ask for someone to have a signed memo. Um, if that's what you want, if that's what you feel you need, that's fine. But uh, we are asking that you have these uh, reviewed by, by the regional office. Um, and for sites not administered by Park Service, it's really up to you all to figure out who your final approval uh, will come from before um, it's uh, sent for a review by our office. And then the final review, um, we will help coordinate that, will be through our Assistant Secretary for Fish and Wildlife and Parks. And once she has given us the green light, then we'll be ready to send it to uh, UNESCO. Oh, and I, I, we've already spoken with uh, folks from Glacier Bay and Wrangell St. Elias, who are part of the Transboundary site with Canada. 
um, and they have slightly earlier deadlines. Um, it's just a few weeks, so hopefully that's not an issue for you all. And for Dave and Tara at, at uh, Glacier, um, I need to check in with you to make sure you know you've started this discussion with with Parks Canada as well. But um, they're going to have, I think, similar slightly earlier deadlines. And so, uh, John, did so you see Scott yes, has a question. Oh, sorry, no, I can't. I can't see that with the way I've got the presentation set up. So please go ahead. Uh, John, um, is there a when you say reviewed by the regional office, is there what does that mean like that? We give them access to our password well, and they go what in I, and they read. Yeah, what I would suggest actually, that's a good question. Thank you, Scott, is you can print it out into a, a word. You can export it into Word or PDF and uh, I would share that um, that document uh, with them. And if there are any key things in particular that you think need to be pointed out to them, you know, highlight highlight that in whatever way uh, makes the most sense. But yeah, I think that's a lot, a lot easier than trying to give them uh, electronic access. Just just print it out and give them and a, then, a word for it. And then that and then that print out the review, and it's somewhat of an informal review. They're just uh, then would they submit their that like a signed? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it's really, I, it's, to it's, you. It's, well, no, we're we're not expecting the regional office to submit us anything. It's going to come from the site from from you. Um, but we are asking that you all figure out, you know, um, how you want that review to look like with the regional office. Um, you know, uh, we're we're going to assume the superintendents can work with the regional director or or whoever in their regional offices that is their primary contact. Let them know this is coming through and ask them, you know, what they would, how they would like that to look. Um, but I, I just think it's important that. Um, you know, we have assurance that the regional offices has at least had a chance to to look at this. There's another question. So yeah, I can't I can't see I can only see my PowerPoint. I can't see the the whole screen. So go ahead. Uh, this is Paul Super from the Smokies. And just for clarification, are you asking that the regional office review it before the February date or before the April date? Ah, yes, good question. That's uh, February. I'm sorry, that would be the April date. If the February 15th date is really for you all to have gone through it once. And if you see any big issues or challenges, things you just can't figure out to make sure that, you know, you've worked with us and we can hopefully fig help you figure that, you know, well in advance of the April 15th date. Does that does that answer your question, Paul? Yes, thank you. And it isn't actually necessary to print it. You can just export it into a Word document. Um, so, yes, um, right. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, yes, so, that's yeah. what I meant. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, Carmen, Carmen Chapin is suggesting that um, our office help coordinate um, uh, the regional review. I think uh, our, our idea was that we were kind of leaving it up to each region to decide how they wanted to handle this, um, like what level um, would review, review it and, you know, what process you are going to undertake, um, but if that turns out to be problematic, maybe right. we I mean, can. I help. think we can have we can have additional discussions on this if if folks you know are if that's uh, if the, if that's going to be a challenge. Um, yeah, and I think I would just offer that one thing we could do from our office would be to maybe have Mike Reynolds, who's our supervisor, send a note to the regional directors to mm -hmm. let them know that this exercise is going on. And mm -hmm. if they're interested in looking at these reports, that they should be in touch with uh, mm. with the superintendents in their region that are working on it. So I can't, I can't, sorry, I can't, again, I can't yeah. see if other folks have questions or, or comments on that. I but think we're good now. Yeah, yeah. okay. So uh, so June 15th is when we hope to send all of the questionnaires to the World Heritage Center. Um, the, the, if the official deadline um, is July 31st, but this would give us an opportunity, uh, you know, if there, if there are any questions and other things that come back to make sure we've got a bit of a buffer um, between, uh, uh, between when we hope to send them in and uh, the, the official final deadline. And then in December of next year, um, we will be getting the, the final reports and those um, are really, you know, uh, again, we said these are big picture. They're, they're not going to be necessarily, you know, naming individual sites, but really um, looking at the, the statistical. Um, how was the term you used to fill us? Uh, uh, kind of a compilation. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
So uh, we'll go to now. Um, I don't know, Phyllis or Steve, do you have anything else that you wanted to add before we get it got into um, uh, questions and hopefully answers? I had a few things um, that came to my mind as I was looking through the questionnaire of things that are likely to be issues that um, maybe I'll just mention to forestall mm -hmm. any questions on those. Should I go ahead or did you want to say anything? Go, go ahead, Phyllis. Of course, Steve. Yeah, go, that, go ahead. Okay. Um, one thing they mentioned is that the focus of this report is on the period since the last report mm -hmm. up till today. So it's um, you're covering the period from 2014 to 2022 basically, um, to help you um, figure out what, what to include or not include. Another point is that, I mean, the questions of which there are many, many, um, are meant to cover every possible world situation for all of the, you know, World Heritage Sites. So it's perfectly fine for a lot of things to be not relevant or not applicable. Um, and we expect that that will be the case for a lot of things. In particular, they've added a section to this round of the um, periodic report on the synergies, as they call it, with the other um, conventions. And some of them, for example, um, I would imagine that many of them are not going to be applicable to you. For example, one of the conventions they mention is the um, Convention on the Intangible World Heritage. The U.S. is not actually a signatory to that treaty, so it's not going to be applicable to anybody, for example. And if there's something else that you're not sure what it is, you know, just ask us. Um, we covered a couple of those things. Um, they talk about um, identifying attributes of your site. That is also a new feature of this um, round of reporting. For the more recently inscribed sites, um, I think since about 2014, Poverty Point, San Antonio, Frank Lloyd Wright, we did explicitly identify the attributes that illustrate outstanding universal value in the World Heritage nomination. For older inscribed sites, that probably hasn't been articulated in the same way. So what we're talking about for attributes are the physical features or characteristics that are critical to um, creating outstanding universal value and maintaining it. So um, for identifying them, the first step would be to look at your um, the brief synthesis of your statement of outstanding universal value and uh, focusing on those features that are called out in the description there. So we can also help with that if you have questions. And again, they say five to 15, I would say, um, stick more to five than 15, <laughs> and I would, I would recommend. Um, they ask questions about whether the boundaries are considered adequate um, and also the buffer zone. And a lot of our earlier inscribed World Heritage sites do not have buffer zones. So there might be a few sites where you would want to flag this as an issue, but on the whole, we don't want to raise a lot of questions about um, the possibility of changing boundaries or mm -hmm. creating buffer zones. So on the whole, unless you're having real problems with this, uh, generally the question um, should probably be answered that the boundaries are generally adequate, um, but that's a case by case issue as well. Um, for the cultural sites and po um, possibly also for some of the natural ones, they do ask about integrity and authenticity. And those are two separate things in the World Heritage Universe, but are generally treated as one thing in the United States under the um, heading of integrity. Um, the way they divide them up in World Heritage is that integrity refers more to the completeness and condition of the site, and authenticity refers more to genuineness, um, if, if that makes sense. It's a rather fine distinction. So um, again, do, do your best with it. We can, we can help if you get stuck on it. And the last thing um, was that there are several um, questions about this a recommendation on the historic urban landscape or hull. What that refers to, um, and that of course is only going to apply to properties that are in more or less urban areas, is a recommendation that focuses on the fact 
that properties in urban settings shouldn't be preserved in a bubble without respect to the larger urban fabric, which also has to be maintained both socially and physically in order for these urban properties to retain their meaning, essentially. The U.S. has not implemented any new guidelines to implement that recommendation because basically our historic preservation structure of national, state, and local preservation laws and um, the Secretary's standards for historic preservation basically cover those issues. Um, so um, that should help you understand what they're asking about and whether it's relevant to you or not. Um, and again, um, just if you have questions, I'll just ask. So those, those were my clarifications. There were a couple of things in the comments. I don't know if, if you guys want to take a look. Yeah. Yeah, um, Barb, I was going to, we, we might have to have a, um, a, an additional conversation about the Frank Lloyd Wright sites because um, the Thomas Jefferson sites um, have dealt with this issue of reporting on two separate sites before, and maybe there are a couple of others as well that it will be relevant to San Antonio. But since you have eight sites that are so widely different in their situations, you have to come up with one answer. So I would, I would basically say that if there is an issue um, relating to one of the sites or more of them that is a significant issue, I would factor that into your answer and then it just explain in the text um, where you have a little narrative section below which one it applies to. And if it applies to only one or two of the eight or three of the eight or, or whatever it might be. On the other hand, if there is one of the factors they're asking about that is kind of a minor factor and in the context of your eight sites together, it's not really a big deal you might not want to bring it up at all. So it's, I think you're, it's really gonna be a, a kind of case by case kind of gut feeling as to whether it's, it's worth um, reporting on or not. There's no right answer um, or right way to do it. So if you're not sure, um, just give me a call. And I see Scott's question about uh, um, challenge or issues that are not directly within the scope of, you know, a site's management, you know, ability like such as climate change. And Scott, I mean, as you can imagine, that's going to be an issue for for many, many more sites. So, um, yeah, we still need to answer those questions. And of course, they understand very well that um, the site itself uh, is not going to be uh, directly able to deal with things like climate change. Um, but yeah, we still need if, if that is a major challenge or issue, we need to report on it. In fact, a lot of the factors they ask about are outside of the control right. of the site managers, right. um, and, and they want to, they want that information. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I stopped sharing, but I did have the question up uh, uh, for whether we want to um, find a way to uh, share uh, questions, uh, challenges, uh, answers. Uh, we thought about maybe setting up a team site focused on the parent reporting. Um, I don't know if that would be easy for folks who are not in the park service. Um, we could have a group email. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on what's the best way if they even want, you know, to have some kind of mechanism um, for for sharing that kind of uh, uh, kind of thing. Group email, so Scott. Jonathan, I think some direction on consistency. So for instance, if they want to know how many men and how many women work on our staff, mm -hmm. we know what what does that mean? Is that, and I mentioned this earlier, is this the green and gray NPS? Mm -hmm. Is this the NPS that also includes the United States Park Police? Mm -hmm. Is this everyone who works on the island and mm -hmm. only one island is the World Heritage Area for us, not two. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, it's, I don't know how to parse it because right. we may have 125 green and gray NPS, but not all of them are assigned to work at Liberty Island. Right. Uh, it, it's, so helping us decide what would be the fairest way to give them information mm -hmm. uh, would be very helpful because I could do it a million different ways. Right. 
Yeah, I guess we should think about that. But I mean, obviously, as Phyllis already mentioned, I mean, this is focused on the World Heritage Site property. So those places, those in this in, the, in this instance, I would say it'd be those individuals who are directly tied to site management. Um, I, and there are also is the ability to add you know, additional information in a lot of these you know um, boxes elsewhere to sort of uh, get to that complexity that you're referring to, John. Um, so yeah, I think these these are the kind of, kind of questions we're gonna have to ask. The Park Service has a, a role in the site management, but so do other entities in other places. So um, this may this may require you know an additional discussion uh, site by site with our office to come up with a. Um, it, it may be difficult to have a consistent answer across the 24 sites. In other words, I don't know, Steve or Phyllis, you have well, a different view. I, I would just say that maybe also on some of these, we may go back to the World Heritage Center and ask for them to clarify right. it for us. Because um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, this is probably coming up in other countries as well. Yeah, so 500 people work here off season. Um, you know, most of them are going to be working at times at the World Heritage Site. Other times, other days, other hours, they may be assigned elsewhere. Um, but, you know, having some sense of what they're looking for. And it's not going to be easy for me to get the demographic information about how many concession employees are men versus women. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it is a little easier for us to get information on the NPS side. Although if we include the United States Park Police, we're going to be more heavily male than we are female. If we mm -hmm. just do green and gray, it's going to come up with a very different kind of cross section. John, mm -hmm. are they actually asking for numbers? Of yeah, men I mean, I can go back. I mean, I'm I know not... they asked about gender equity in a general way. Um, I thought they asked for numbers. I will go back and look, and that's where mm -hmm. I sort of stopped. Right. Because I looked at the 2013 survey, and there's a lot more questions in this survey than there are in the 2013 survey. If mm -hmm. I could just look at the 2013 survey and know that it's all the same questions, I could probably have it done pretty quickly. But it, mm -hmm. it seemed mm -hmm. to me there were many more questions. And I also wasn't sure initially how long it was and whether it would ever end. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's an excellent you know, it, would, it would be helpful to know you have three pages to go, um, yeah. but, but it again, was uh, a little daunting after a while. This business about the gender equity, this is one an example of the kind of thing that you have to remember this. This is happening in a global context. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are countries in which there are no women working um, at, at some of the sites or in the administration. So, you know, we're, we're not in that situation. So you may not have exactly exact parity, but I, I don't think we're, you know, that gender equity should be an enormous issue for any of our sites. No, on the other hand, you know, we know that there are areas where we need to do work and, and it's hard to sometimes generalize. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, you know, questions about terrorists. Are you a terrorist target? Well, yeah. Um, have we mitigated that to a degree? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the questions were very hard. You could answer the questions in many different ways. Right. And I was mm -hmm. trying to think of what would be consistent and what would be sort of uh, fair given the global nature of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I think this is where our group email could come in handy so we can get a sense of whether these kind of questions are coming up in other sites, you know, beyond yours, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even things like I mean, many of our parks have concessions and concession employees. Do we do we include those as the uh, f folks who are involved in site management? I mean, I, I can make an argument either way, but. Well, you know, we do a lot of our work through contracted service providers. Mm -hmm. So in another national park, the janitorial work would be done by federal employees. Right. At our site, it's done by contracted service providers, and we've got a lot of examples of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so when they want the demographics of the workforce, it's important to know what workforce they're talking about. Right. I mean, my sense is they're not, I mean, this is not, this is not a park service report, right? I mean, they're interested mm -hmm. in the site and the site management. So I, I, I would argue probably we need, need to be more sort of holistic and include everyone who's involved in site management. And, and site management is also for yeah, me, a tricky a word part. because it doesn't necessarily mean the superintendent, but, you know, then again, what does it mean? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't manage this place without mowing the lawns and right. clearing the snow. So, yep. 
you know, at, at what level are there. we dealing with this? And mm -hmm. is it every deckhand for every concession vessel? Um, is it food service providers? You know, mm -hmm. where where do we draw the line? Right. I see a couple other questions in the chat. Well, Scott has his hand up and also Paul asked about the maps. Uh, yeah, thanks, Steve. Map, right? I, uh, I just wanted to maybe it seems like a lot of these questions, um, there could be nuance in mm -hmm. how they're answered. And I'm and I guess building on what John was talking about, um, if they're uh, like uh, the question becomes how, like how these how these how this information will be used. And um, and and the reason I ask that is that if if they're going to if the World Heritage Center is going to contrast uh, the the report from 2013, um, should we use 2013 as a guide um, as to how to report? So in other words, um, you know, for example, if the previous superintendent in 2013 reported at John's site that they had, you know, 722 workers and then mm -hmm. John uh, interprets the question differently and says, mm -hmm. well, we only have 122 green and gray. Right. If if they're going to contrast that, then uh, you could draw the inference that their site mm -hmm. is not following the convention, for example. And so I'm just I don't exactly know how they're going to use this and um, whether or not we should use the 2013 as a guide to you know, kind of resolve some of that nuance in these questions to get at kind of the big picture. You know, what are they trying to get at here just to make sure that we're answering sufficiently? It may be easiest to pull out what are the new questions? Mm. Because we, we, I agree, we will look at 2013 and say, here's how we answered it the last right. time. Is that still fair? And I think in most cases, it's going to be the same. Mm -hmm. It's, but I looked I started to see questions that I hadn't seen in 2013 and maybe pulling those out and having conversation about those would be helpful. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But as Good. far as how the information is going to be used, I don't believe that they are going to drill into the individual site questionnaires and say, oh, it looks like, you know, things have gotten a lot worse there, or all of a sudden you have a, a problem, or the, the U.S. sites are cons inconsistent. They're, they're looking for large-scale trends right. in um uh, When I say large-scale, I mean on, you know, North America overall, North America and Europe combined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are the kinds of issues that are cropping up um, statistically? So I wouldn't, I would not get too hung up on some of these things as long as you are giving a relatively correct answer based on how you answered it before mm -hmm. and what your current situation is. I, I don't think it'll be a big issue. I mean, I think it's going to be things like just follow up on Phyllis. There'll be things like. 95% of the sites in North America reported, you know, uh, increasing um, threats from climate change. Um, you know, 72% of them reported, uh, you know, a 10% or more increase in visitation. It's going to be uh, you know, sort of that scale of uh, the reporting, not, you know, uh, Statue of Liberty said, you know, uh, site management staff went down or up by 10%. I don't think they're going to, you know, focus on that kind of detail. And just to respond to Paul, um, I think you're at Great Smokies, right, Paul? Mm -hmm. um, that's correct. Even if your park has added uh, land, um, the World Heritage Boundary has not changed, so no need to do anything with the map. Great, thanks. Well, Along that know. line, okay. I, sorry, I'm. I assume that the world or the biosphere region bound buffer zone has no relevance to right. the World right. Heritage Boundary. That's correct. Even though they're both good, good UNESCO question. programs, right. yeah, you'd think there right. might be some connection, but no. <laughs> Sounds like uh, no more questions, but uh, and sounds like also that folks are willing or interested in having a group email, which we can we can set up. 
and uh, send that out. We can send the recording out. That may, maybe our first thing to do is send the recording to everyone on this uh, call and those who weren't able to join. Um, and you know how, how to reach out to all of us. Anything else from you, Steve or Phyllis, before we sign off? I have um, uh, something that's off topic, but I put it in the chat at the beginning. But if any of you want extra copies of the Unigrid, the World Heritage yeah. Unigrid brochure, we have boxes of them here and uh, we're happy to send you send you a supply if you need it. Everybody Jonathan, seen these? Jonathan had uh, an image of, of it on the first slide. Yeah, oh, and, to... and maybe, Steve, we should mention that we've got, you know, um, a possible sibling in the pipeline um, just uh, for the, the information of our, our sites that there's a um, we've got um, a World Heritage nomination um, being reviewed now for the Hopewell Ceremonial Earthworks in Ohio which is a, a combination of Hopewell Culture National Historical Park and the associated uh, state-owned sites in the area. So um, that, that may get inscribed um, this coming summer. All right, which will make the brochure out of date. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> we gotta, but it will, we bring, get, up, it'll now. bring us up to an even 25 World Heritage sites, knock on wood. So, so uh, Carmen, can you send us an email with a um, uh, an address and a name of who we should send them to at CAVE. Absolutely. Yes, right. that's right, Barbara. The brochure. Sorry, I was using the in the in in parks logo, the Unigrid, but it is the brochures. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for participating. Uh, we look forward to working on uh, these with you over the next few months and. Hopefully it's uh, not too uh, too painful. Hmm. Happy Thanks, holidays, everybody. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>